Hey everyone and welcome to the Dancing Drew Times. Today's video is brought to you by Leah, who suggested, It would be funny to rank the Nancy Drew death scenes or second chance scenes. Give your top 20 because that's a lot. So today, that's exactly what we're doing. Thanks for the suggestion, Leah, and if you are watching and have any ideas for content you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. In the wise words of Casey Porterfield, I love checking stuff out like this. Before we kick off this ranking sluice, I would like to mention just how challenging it was to pin my thoughts on this, especially because when you look at the games based on era, the second chance has got a bit of a makeover a time or two. Originally, the second chances in games 1 through 15 were a combination of errors players could make that could spawn them back to the main menu and allow for the option of a second chance. And in games 16 and 17, players were automatically spawned back to the game right before they made a fatal error. Another change came with game 18 when players were given several funny scenarios and a menu with the options of trying again or not. At first, I had no clue whether to organize second chances based on era, since they can be so different from each other, or just lump them all together. But I think the best step moving forward is just to lump and rank my favorites as they are. With some honorable mentions, of course. So, without further ado, here are my top 20 favorite second chances. Coming in at number 20, we have the Rotten Floorboards from Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. This is an absolute classic. Um, I love this game and I remember playing it for the first time and being absolutely spooked by the ambience of being at Sally's cabin at night alone in the middle of the woods. And of course there's this classic phone call with Sally where there's this static, you can't really hear her and she's telling you about the ghost dogs. And of course there's the classic ghost dog attack in the middle of night. and. All of that just really sets the tone for the game. It's, it's really lovely. And I remember being in the cabin, as soon as the game starts, you really start to open everything up. You're opening up the cabinets, you're looking at the table and the notepad on the kitchen uh, counter, and you're really just trying to find a clue, anything to kind of get you started in the game and the story. And there's this really empty corner in the living space of the cabin. And it has like three post-it notes on the wall and you're immediately drawn to it. You just want to go over there and, and, and find out what, it, what do those post-it notes say. And you walk over there and immediately Nancy starts reading the uh, post-it note about the rotten floors. And you hear this breaking and cracking of the floor and you know in that moment you have messed up and Nancy's about to fall into the floor. Uh, it, it is just a really classic second chance for me. It's one that I always remember and that I did not see coming when I first played the game. Uh, it, it's just an absolute classic. Number 19, Ghost Attack from Ghost of Thornton Hall. This was a bit shocking for me because most of my favorite second chances actually come from the classic era of Nancy Drew games, uh, mostly games 1 through 15, and I just did not expect to have a favorite second chance from any really newer games, but thinking about this, debating over which ones were some of my favorite, this second chance did come to mind. It is actually one that I thought was really well done and clever and a bit on the spookier side, which I love because it went with the game. So there's a section and a part of Ghost of Thornton Hall where you have to correctly dig in the, in the, in the correct spot in the tunnels of the Thornton Hall. And in these caves, uh, there's these symbols and you have to figure out the puzzle, but if you dig in the wrong spot, Charlotte will pay you a visit. And she really like jumps at you and it's a very spooky second chance, something that actually did make me jump when I played the game for the first time. And uh, that is a second chance that I think was well done. It's not a funny second chance and it's not... Uh, necessarily like a really clever second chance. It's really just a well done second chance for um, the fact that it just goes really well with the uh, feelings that you get from the from the game. You should be spooked. You should jump a few times. So I really appreciated that this second chance was doing that for us in this game. So Charlotte's Ghost Attack, I loved it. Number 18, Drinking Too Much Water Tomb of the Lost Queen. Another surprising second chance that I actually just really appreciate and love is when you are in this game, 
uh, you really do immerse yourself into the heat of the environment. Uh, it's sandy. You can, uh, you know, you can feel the sun by Nancy's comments when she comments on the heat, and other players in the game comment on the heat. But really, what gets me is that that second chance of drinking too much water never even remotely crossed my mind. Uh, there was a water tank in the game, and several times you can make Nancy drink water, but never did I think a second chance would come from drinking too much water. And I just really appreciate that second chance. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with these newer games is that the second chances are very, um, they're less creative than the second chances that used to come out in the uh, classic era of games. And you'll see that uh, a lot of the newer games, the second chances are very expected or they're repeated second chances from classic era games. So they're not even the original second chances, right? And this one was a first. There was never a, a, a second chance where Nancy could drink too much water. So that's, I, I think, another reason why I appreciate it so much. I remember learning about the second chance and truly laughing out loud. I just thought that was so funny that you can make Nancy drink too much water. So for Tomb of the Lost Queen, I think that one is very well done. Number 17, Falling Off the Map, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. This second chance is hysterical to me because as someone that loves to play video games, you come to realize that your map is um, almost kind of like an inbounds area. You can't go outside the map, right? You kind of, uh, you kind of just come to terms with that. You realize that it's, it, it, there is an end to the map and you can't go past certain points, right? Um, what makes this one to me so humorous is that the, her interactive team created a second chance where as Nancy, you are flying around on this jetpack in Ireland, right? Already so crazy enough. Um, and you're on you know, you're, you're able to fly to these different locations and land to them, almost kind of like a quick travel, which is pretty cool in this game. But what's so funny is that you can fall off the map if you go technically out of bounds. And I find that so hilarious because that is in term, I guess, true. If your jetpack does run out of fuel and you are flying over the ocean, well, you're going to fall in the ocean. So I think that is hilariously uh, implemented in this game. When it happened to me, I thought it was so funny. I was flying, I think, past the castle over the cliffs, and I think I was trying to get to that one little island that you have to get to in the game, and I flew too far out past the water and ended up falling into the ocean and Nancy just screaming, and it was so funny to me because I, was, I just wasn't expecting that. Um, usually you'll just kind of get like an out of bounds, like it'll bop you back a, little, a few a few feet and you know, oh, I can't go that way. No, the her team was like, well, let's just let them keep going until they fall into the ocean. So I thought that was really funny and well done. And I really appreciated it in this game. Number 16, feeding Lulu the wrong food, Curse of Blackmore Manor. This one to me is also another classic second chance. It is hilarious and awesome. And one joke that I believe is universal among Nancy Drew players, I think we all have at some point joked about uh, feeding the wrong food to Lulu at some point. Uh, but in this second chance, you feed Lulu an ingredient that is not supposed to be fed to parrots. And you learn this based on uh, the cell phone. You can look up this information on uh, the internet on the www.com uh, <laughs> and on Nancy's flip phone and you learn about what ingredients a parent, sh a parent should eat and what they shouldn't eat. And you're supposed to take that information and obviously make a cake for Lulu that is appropriate for her digestive system. And of course, you know, if you kind of just want to play chaotically, you would obviously put some ingredients that they're not supposed to have and feed it to Lulu just to see what would happen uh, if you're like me and you would get this beautiful second chance. It zooms in on Lulu's face. She eats it and almost kind of like her eye just like focuses and she, I think it changes each time you do it, but she will say a different quote from a movie and it is the funniest thing and she just literally like just 
dives backwards and falls to the bottom of the cage. And that's the end of the second chance. But that is hilarious. And I love the, you know, the um, diversity of the second chance as well. I love that it changes up on you and you can hear a different Lulu quote from a movie every time. That is hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. But I love that it also incorporated an action with it as well. It wasn't just something that was um, something that just unfolded while you played. It was something that no, 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 you have to learn this information on a cell phone and you have to purposely not do it or do it um, in order to see what the second chance is. So you kind of learn about it and you know that there's consequences with it. It's one of those that are you going to do it or not just to see what happens. Uh, and I think is a classic one that we all remember because we all love Lulu. She's hilarious. Number 15 giving Holt two female crabs and getting arrested. Danger on Deception Island. So this is one of my favorite games from the series, actually my favorite game from the series. Um, and there's this one second chance that always stood out to me because it was something that I did not think would be a consequence at all. Uh, it just is such an extreme consequence. Uh, but at some point in the game, you know, you meet Holt Scotto, you have to uh, do this seamanship quiz, and there's about 10 questions on it or so, maybe nine questions. And the 10th thing is you have to bring a male Dungeness crab to Holt Scotto. And what is so funny with this second chance is that you can make this mistake once, but if you make it twice, um, a newspaper article will come up, just like all the other second chances, they'll have a newspaper article. But in this newspaper article, if you have brought two female Dungeness Crabs in a row to Holt Scotto, you, Nancy Drew, will be arrested. It is against the law. It is so funny to me. I remember doing that um, I when I was really, really young and playing this game for the first time and was so confused I was that I was arrested. I was like, I is that is that illegal to do? And it really might be. But you know, in my head I was thinking, oh, you know, if I do this, he's I'm just, you know, just second chance. He's just gonna get mad at me or something and I I, I don't know. I like but getting arrested, like truly going to jail over accidentally giving two <laughs> two female crabs to old Scotto. That is an hilarious second chance that always sticks out to me when I play Danger on Deception Island. Number 14, knocking on Mrs. Drake's door in the middle of the night, Curse of Blackmore Manor. So this is one of my favorite games. Um, it is a classic game and has several second chance scenes that I believe are very memorable. And this one for me is one that really took me back in my seat. I actually jumped at it, not because it was scary per se or spooky or anything like that or any kind of jumps, just of how unprepared I was for the response that I got from doing this. So when playing the game, you're snooping in the middle of the night, you can knock on Mrs. Drake's door. It's one of the only rooms in this game that you cannot explore. You can truly explore every other inch of Curse of Blackmore Manor, which is why I believe it's one of everyone's favorites as well. Uh, it's not really off limits. Um, but this room and the kitchen, you cannot explore. And so you knock on it in the middle of the night. I don't know what I was thinking when I played. I don't know if I thought that Mrs. Drake would just open it in her bathrobe and face mask. I, I or that maybe she just would be out and about, you know, she wouldn't even be home in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning while I'm snooping. Maybe she'd be at, I don't know, Target. I don't know. Maybe at Target. I don't know. So you knock on it. And then for whatever reason, Mrs. Drake lets out the shrillest, loudest scream ever. It made me jump so hard. And it's the funniest thing because it's so unexpected. You're like, whoa, this woman is just screaming. And uh, you literally scare Mrs. Drake so bad that you get sent home and you're off the case. Um, and you just get this scene where your luggage is at the front door of Blackmore Manor and you're getting a call that you're off the case. And that is the funniest thing to me. I'll always remember that. Miss Drake is such a dramatic character, and I love that that is the second chance, that you scare her to the point where you get fired. That is too funny. Coming in at number 13 is 
carrying the stones for too long, and Nancy drops them, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. This second chance is one that I believe gets really overlooked and forgotten about, but it is so smart. It's such a smart second chance for me. Uh, I remember playing this game, and actually the first time, I didn't even do this, so I, I discovered this second chance way later on a different play through this game, but you can actually pick up one of those really big discs, uh, the big stones from the museum, and you're gonna try. Nancy attempts to carry it to across the museum to another exhibit, and um, or you can actually just put the, uh, you're just carrying the stone, like you're just gonna walk out with it, like out of the museum with it. And Nancy is continuously like, uh, you know, she's like grunting like it's really heavy and she makes all these comments like I don't think I can hold it for much longer And if you don't hurry and put it back Nancy will drop it and That's the second chance and it'll just break um, And I think that is hilarious and so smart too because that is a second chance where I just you know Usually games they don't have a very logical playthrough you can pick up like the randomest objects up You know Nancy does that she's like sticking butter and turkey into her purse or her bag and uh you know you just don't you just don't think about those things but she will comment that these stones are too hard too heavy for her to carry and she will drop them and that is the funniest second chance in the secret of scarlet hand and i have always loved that one it's so good number 12 when hens attack secret of shadow ranch so in this game, there's a lot of chores that Nancy has to do. She feeds the chickens, she feeds the horses, uh, she even cooks at one point. Um, it, there's a lot of chores. And one of those chores is making sure to get all of the eggs from the chicken coop. And there's this one hen that Nancy's warned that she cannot approach. And if she approaches this hen, it could be bad. There's even a little sign under the specific uh, shelf where this chicken sits. and. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're playing the Nancy Drew game, you just get this urge, like you want to do the wrong thing just to see what will happen. And you know that there will be consequences, but you do it anyways. So um, it's just too funny, you know, to not to not go towards the hen that would get mad. So you approach the hen, you try and take one of uh, the eggs and you will get attacked. The, the, the chicken just starts flapping like crazy and just starts and you do you get attacked it's the funniest thing it's so funny and one that always sticks out to me when i think about this game number 11 eaten by a plant the curse of blackmore manor um like i said this game is just really memorable has lots of good second chances and this one is an absolute classic in the nancy drew community it's one that not only has a lot of jokes attached to it but is like a very key highlight from the game, like something that I believe everyone remembers. Because there's second chances in all of the games that, you know, you just, you don't just stumble upon. And then there's very obvious second chances. And those very obvious ones, I think all players have had an experience with because you just are so tempted to go for it, you just can't help yourself. And this is one of those second chances. Uh, you approach the plant for the first time because it's already in itself you're like wow this plant is really big and has you know it's just a funny looking plant and nancy you know comments like mm, maybe i shouldn't you know you know mess with the plant but of course you're going to click on the plant again and mess with it because it's just too funny and you click and nancy literally is gobbled up by this plant and it's funny too because you see her like mom jeans and tennis shoes just waving and flapping around as she's being eaten by this plant. It's an hilarious second chance, one that I think everyone has experience with, <laughs> and it's just very classic to this game. So coming in at number 11, that was my favorite second chance from Curse of Blackmore Manor. Okay, we've hit the top 10, and I'm really excited about these second chances because of how well they are executed in these games so coming in at number 10 we have failure to stop the demolition the final scene um a lot of my top 10 second chances are picked not only because they are memorable and not only because they are so classic but also because of the execution 
And for me, the final scene has some of the best second chances of all the games. Um, particularly, I really enjoyed the ending of the final scene because there are so many opportunities to um, make an error. And you really, really, really have to use your detective skills to make the right choice and the right decision. And when it comes to failing at the mystery, that that alone being the reason you have you need a second chance, and not just that, but you know, failure to stop the actual demolition, failure to save Maya, failure to stop the villain. There's just so many second chances needed in that one space, and you have to be the person that hides from the police. You have to be the person to uh, choose the right key and to use what you have on you to stop Joseph. So there's a lot of actual thinking and detective skills that play into this second chance. And I think that's why it makes my top 10 is because of just how clever it is and how much it involves the player into really thinking and putting forth effort in doing the right thing. So for me, that is immediately in my top 10. Doesn't rank as high as some of my other favorite ones, but um, it is still a really good second chance. Number nine, activating the carousel, the haunted carousel. This is another second chance that I feel is very clever in its execution. Um, there's at one point where Nancy finds a trap door that leads her to underneath the, the uh, carousel and she is able to activate the carousel from underneath, but if she does that, she will be impaled by one of the poles from the horses of the, of the machine. And I always found that one to be so smart because you really do, as the player, as the detective, you really do have to put two and two together, use your common sense. Obviously you don't want to do that. Um, because you'll get injured and it would be bad and you don't want to do that. So that's just one of those classic ones that I remember from this game that I think was done so well that really made the player have to be an individual and think about what actions would cause what consequences. So I love that second chance and it's definitely in my top 10. Number eight, getting caught by the police, the final scene. So as we said before, I do believe the final scene has some of the best second chances and that ending is just so incredible. Adrenaline is running, you're just really on it and excited, you're almost there at the end, you know that time is running out. And this is actually a second chance that would reoccur later on in other Nancy Drew games as well. I believe that it is a absolute classic second chance. Um, I'd probably say that Treasure in the Royal Tower had it first but this one executed it in a different way that would later become the second chance that they would use several times again. And we'll talk about Treasure in a Royal Tower in a minute, but the final scene though, getting stopped by the uh, police officers, I thought that was such a clever way to make the player think, okay, I know they're about to come into this door and search, where is the correct place to hide? And that is a second chance that is so smart. There is no hints for this. You just have to use your detective wits on you and just find the right spot to hide from the police officers. And I love that. I love that that is a part of being a detective. Um, and they did it so well in the final scene. And uh, I, you know, a game that I think used it again that I can think of off the top of my head is The Phantom of Venice when you're in Fongo's office. I think that that one is a direct, um, direct link to the final scene where you're having to hide in the filing cabinet. It's just such a special, uh, special second chance for me. One that really made me feel like, oh my goodness, I solved that, you know, I really overcame that puzzle. And so I love that feeling and I love that that second chance was implemented in this game. Number seven, The Mines, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. I absolutely love this second chance. Um, really just the ending part of this game in, in, in its entirety, really. Um, but this second chance in particular just shows how immaculate they were really thinking for this game. 
um, because this game for me is so grand. That's the word I usually think of when I when I think about Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Um, everything was done just so well, characters and story and environments, and they wanted to end on a high note and they really accomplished that. So when you're chasing Lori in the mines, they ended this game on a classic chasing, a chasing the villain and saving the day. Such a heroic ending. You feel like you're on top of the world because you caught the villain, like you literally caught the villain. And I love that. And they do it. They do so with a, uh, a mine and you are in a mine cart traveling through these old minecart railways that are just so old that you're dodging if you're trying to go left or right you're dodging objects and it's so awesome it is that's a puzzle that really hadn't been implemented in the nancy drew games at that time and truly honestly really wasn't implemented again in that way it was so video game-ish but still so perfect in its way and I loved it so much. I love that you had to figure out the maze to get out of the, 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 the mountain, the cave, and catch Lori. It was so perfect in every way. So for me, this second chance is totally in the top 10. Number six, leaving the iron on the haunted carousel. So I know that this is probably one of the most famous second chance scenes out of all the games. It is just such a good second chance, especially because um, it's one that I think, again, everyone has experience with. I think everyone has left the iron on at some point and burned the hotel down, uh, but that is that is so funny. And every, every, to this day, anytime I ever go to a hotel, I always think about that second chance. I'm always like, oh, we gotta make sure the iron's unplugged and away from everything. And it always like freaks me out a bit. So one, one thing I also really love about this second chance is also that it really does give you, the player, um, kind of control and autonomy to be able to make right decisions and learn from consequences. So at some point you do learn that um, you definitely always want to turn your iron off. Um, that I think I don't know if that's on Nancy's computer or there's a magazine that says it. Either way, you do learn that information somewhere and you do have to remember to turn it off because it does come in use with a puzzle. So I love that they kind of threw that in there to kind of teach you about that safety and also just to um, see if you would remember. So I just kind of love that and think it's an absolute classic not to include in the top 10. We've made it to number five and it is allowing the fire to burn down the mansion, the haunted mansion. So I remember this second chance specifically because of how it occurs and playing uh, the Haunted Mansion for the first time, truly it caught me off guard, um, was entering the parlor area and immediately there's this fire and immediate panic music begins. And it was so unexpected because, uh, you know, you weren't expecting that when you entered the door and every time you've entered the door, before nothing like that has ever happened so um, it's a very dramatic turn in events and you really do have to think quick to get the fire out um i especially love that i especially love that when you're putting the fire out you have to remember that there's a fire extinguisher in that cabinet and that you will use that at some point um but you don't know that at the time that you find it. And so when the fire does happen, you're in such panic mode that you may even forget about that fire extinguisher that you found an hour or two ago when you first played. So it really is, you know, a matter of remembering and using those detective skills to use what objects are nearby to handle the situation. And I love that. I love that second chance um, that can occur, but also being able to use um, your detective skills. It's just so great. And I think to me, that's what makes second chances so memorable if they're extremely funny or if you're just able to really piece together and use your detective skills i love those number four jumping from the elevator ladder treasure in royal tower man this second chance 
is an absolutely iconic second chance. It is so good. And I believe that all players have had experience with this one and they love it. They joke about it. It's funny. We all know it. It's kind of just a universal Nancy Drew game niche that I love. And that is the fact that Nancy is exploring in areas that she shouldn't, which is a very Nancy thing to do in the first place. And anytime Nancy explores places that are off limits or when things are closed or locked, there's always going to be this level of danger and threat with it. And with this one, she has found a way to escape the elevator and kind of explore that area of the air ducts and the elevator and what's below. And I love that. All right, that, that in itself is already so great. Um, but where the second chance comes from is this, you know, faulty judgment in perception. You think that you have enough space to jump to where you're trying to get to, but in reality, the perception has failed and you dramatically fall all the way down uh, the elevator chute. And it is very funny because Nancy's scream is so dramatic. Um, but also too because it really, you know, you really have to use those detective and thinking skills again. Really just looking and judging to see, okay, can I do this or should I wait? Do I have all the necessary tools with me? Am I not close enough? How can I get close enough to where I, where this will work? So it, using those and in combination with the, with the funny, I think the second chance ranks pretty high for me because of those reasons. I love it. It's so classic and it's one that I always remember when I think of second chances. Number three, the library alarm, treasure in the Royal Tower. So this one for me comes from, again, the execution of it. I think it is the first second chance where we actually have to hide from another character, which again, like I talked about with um, the other second chance from the final scene, this will become a classic second chance that will be used again and again, having to hide from a character. And its implementation in this game is flawless. I think it's just absolutely wonderful. You know, you've already figured out after so much sleuthing how to get to the library, but we're not done yet. You know, then you've got to hide from Dexter and you've got to, you know, find the paintbrush to get to the dust and use it on the keypad, you know, to get the code. It is so fantastically done and using all of that detective skills for me makes me feel like oh such a you know big brain moment you know comes from that being able to do that so I love that second chance because of that um, you know just the action of getting caught if you don't do those steps correctly is so well done so well done because um, you really 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 do have to act like a true detective in this game, in this situation, in the sneaking in the library and trying not to get caught. So because of those reasons, I think I love it all so much more. Um, number three, the library alarm. Number two, Lewis's briefcase, message in a haunted mansion. Oh man, I remember experiencing the second chance and really, really thinking about it and looking back, seeing how absolutely clever and what a phenomenal second chance so well done is message in a haunted mansion lewis's briefcase i love that i love that whole entire thing being able to spy on lewis from the secret room that you find um and then trying to break into his briefcase but then when you're talking to lewis this is where the second chance really just blows my mind and you say a word that only you could have learned from a book that's in his briefcase. And he directly just asks you, where'd you learn that word? And the second chance comes from whether or not you give the correct response. I, I can't remember exactly it. I think it's something you say, like I read it in a magazine or I saw it and maybe in a book or something like that. And if you don't pick the correct response, Lewis will know that you've been snooping in his briefcase and that's it, you're off the case, you're done. And I think that's so clever. Every time I think about this game, I remember that second chance. I remember the feeling of trying to piece together that whole um, slew of puzzles and clues to get to that point. And man, what a well done second chance. That is a true detective moment, you know, having to use the right language and words to persuade your characters, you know, and to say the right things. 
that's such a detective thing to do. And so I really appreciated that the Her Interactive team implemented that into this game. It just so well done, so well done, and I love that. So for number two, oh, definitely goes to Lewis's briefcase. All right, Sluice, we're about to get to my number one favorite second chance from the Nancy Drew games. But before we do that, I have a couple of honorable mentions that I love to talk about. Here are my top five honorable mentions. Coming in at number five, we have Burning Down the Kitchen in the White Wolf of Icicle Creek. So in this game, Nancy has to cook three times a day for all the guests staying in the lodge. That's a lot of times. And if she doesn't flip the quesadilla in time, she'll burn down the entire kitchen. It's not one of my favorites, but I still appreciate it. And for number four, we have The Falling Chandelier, The Message in a Haunted Mansion. So in this second chance, there is a beautiful chandelier that hangs in the front entrance lobby area of the mansion. And Nancy has the opportunity to unravel the rope and watch the entire chandelier fall. And it actually comes in, comes in being a really handy at the end of the game, which is why it's an honorable mention for me, because it's not just a second chance, but it actually ends up becoming the solution at the end of the game. So you have to use that to stop Lewis um, from getting the treasure. And I think that's pretty clever in how they connected the two. Um, but it's not one of my all-time favorites. It doesn't. It's not something that automatically sticks out to me as some of the others have, but I still appreciate the effort and I think it's um, one that does stand out amongst the rest. Coming in at number three, we have Falling Off the Bridge, Secret of the Old Clock. So you have just started this game, you are only about maybe five minutes in, and you're crossing over um, the bridge. It's like a small bridge from the Lilac Inn over to Josiah Crowley's home. And there's this receipt that's flying in the air and you're trying to catch it and if you uh, lean too much like if you're trying to grab the receipt when it's almost off the screen you can fall off the bridge that is something that is so funny and so unexpected I think as soon as you first start playing the game you definitely don't think that you're gonna fall off the bridge trying to catch the receipt but that's a clever second chance uh, one that is pretty realistic in real life you know if you're trying to you know lean over something and grab it you could fall so I really do appreciate that second chance because of that coming in at number two we have nasty sandwich danger on deception island I love this second chance but I didn't feel like it was worthy enough to end up in my top 20 because um, I loved the other ones more to be honest with you um, but this one is unique and that's why it is on honorable mentions um, making a sandwich in Danger on Deception Island is hilarious in itself already, but the idea that you can make a nasty sandwich and feed other characters the sandwich is so funny. And there is a moment in this game where Katie is really hungry and she asks Nancy to make her a sandwich. And so Nancy goes, makes a sandwich, and there are some really weird ingredients. You can put like jellyfish fluid or something like that on the sandwiches. Some, some weird stuff, y'all. And you can actually feed that to Katie and she can get food poisoning and you're off the case. So I think that's really funny and I think it deserves a spot on honorable mentions just because you can carry a sandwich around in your bag and feed it to other characters. That's hilarious. And coming in, my number one spot of my honorable mentions is Blowing Up the Shed, The Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. I love this second chance for what it is. Um, after you've been through it all with Nancy, Nancy is tied up. The shed is caught on, it's caught on fire. It's put on fire by the culprit. And they left Nancy there to um, be burned. Isn't that terrible? And you are trying all the ways using all the objects in the shed to get out and when you get out you still have to put the fire out with um, water from the lake or water from the well and that is crazy can you believe that that that's a second chance and that's so crazy like you've already been knocked out tied up left to burn in a shed and now you're going to put the water out and save the day which is so funny but the second chance is if you don't put out the fire the whole forest catches on fire and you get the funniest message and the message that you get if you don't do it it'll say hey kids remember 
After you've been knocked out, tied up, and left in a burning shed, be sure to put out the fire. And that is so funny that they went ahead and did that. And so because of that, I have to include that in my honorable mentions because I think that is not only such a funny second chance, one that's memorable, but also just an extra little bit of pizzazz that puts it up at the number one spot for honorable mentions. So that's why that is number one. Okay, we have finally made it to my number one spot and I'm so excited about it. It is my favorite second chance. I think it's great. Here we go. Number one, falling off the balcony, the final scene. I love this game. I love the second chance. As I've said before, I think the final scene has some of the best second chances out of all the games. And with this one, it is not only unique, not only is it um, executed so 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 amazingly but also it's funny it it hits all the points that it needs to from a player's perspective and there is this gear that you have to get um it's kind of fallen off on the ledge above the below the balcony and at first you think oh well I, maybe nancy can reach that and you attempt to reach it and you fall off the balcony and that is an hilarious second chance but in order to get that gear, you have to use your detective skills, and this is where the execution comes in so nicely. You have to think of taking the magic wand that you find, putting the gum that you find from the seat on the magic wand in order to reach down and grab the gear so you don't fall off the balcony. And that second chance for me is so well done. That hits all the points that you need um, from a second chance, you know, it just really does. It hits the spot. I think it is a well done, wonderful second chance. One that I just remember, will always remember, and I think is so special for players. Well, detectives, thank you so much for joining me in this video where I ranked my favorite second chances. I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for my next video. I will hopefully be traveling to a lot of antique stores in my hometown to show you guys all of the cool vintage Nancy Drew trinkets that I find. Um, usually these antique stores have so many of them and I'm hoping I can find a, um, a good display so I can have it for a video and just kind of take you guys on this tour of these antique stores. So I'm really excited about that video and I'll have more updates on my social media, my Instagram, the Nancy Drew Times. So please be sure to follow me. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. You guys are the best.